Hey friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I am coming from underneath a big mango tree in my backyard and this is the third part of the Rome collection videos I've been showing. I started showing the cielo tops. I'm wearing one now, colorful one. <laughs> And a few days ago, I showed you the Pietra pants. Thank you for all the comments and opinions about whether you'd unpick or not. There are many of you who agree and would do that extra work to get the pants to fit right. And many of you don't, and that's really cool. It's always really interesting to see what other people think. And I guess the things that we do have a lot to do with the context we're in and where we're coming from, you know? In my case, I don't have access to more red linen. I really like the fabric and I really want to wear them so I find that unpicking is worth it for me. The Fiore skirts are part of the Rome collection. What they all have in common is that they are sort of A-lined flared out style skirts with waistbands. They have two lengths, a knee length and a midi length and then the three views differ in the style. So view A is just the most simple skirt flared out with an invisible zip on the back. View B is a wrap skirt with an asymmetrical pocket on the side and the wrap itself on the front is asymmetric. This is actually the style that I saw that I found most appealing visually for me. You see is a flared out skirt with big patch pockets on the side and buttons up going up and down with a waistband. These waistbands are rectangular waistbands. The fabrics they recommend are the more stiffer, you know, more structured wovens. So your denim, chambray, linen, you know, twill, that sort of thing. But they say you can also make it out of lightweight fabrics for views A and B. But for view C that have those, you know, sort of biggish patch pockets, they won't hold the structure in a light fabric. So that one actually needs to be in a more structured fabric. The sizing comes from sizes 0 to 20 US with a waist of 24 to 39 inches and hips of 33 to 48 inches. There's one inch of positive ease at the waist and quite a lot of ease at the hips due to the style. The length offered is 19.5 to 24.25 inches depends on the size and whether you're choosing above the knee or below the knee. I chose uh, a length in between those two so that it hits me just at the knee. If I'd chosen the above the knee for my height, it would have been too short. So the skirts that I want to show you are view B and view C. I didn't make view A. In up close and so personal, I focused on the skirt view C that I made in linen. And I'm going to show you a fabric saving layout. I made it in a very small amount of fabric. <laughs> I'm very happy about that. And also some features of the patch pockets. Then I'll be back to show you both skirts. The view B and the view C. I'm going to start by showing you how I managed to make view C it of 110 centimeters and the length adjustments I made to the skirt. This is view C. Now I've decided to eliminate that back center seam that view C has. So I folded that 5 eighths of an inch in and placed it on the fold of the fabric there. This will allow me to save huge amounts of fabric in the end. The front there, I'm going to show you that there is a knee length version that would be extremely short for me. Above the knee, I am taller. So I've lengthened that by three inches. So it's not the midi length, it's between. Here you can see the back right on the edge on the fold and the front right on the edge of the selvage there. The pocket and the waistband. The base, waistband was just one piece, but I folded it in half and placed it there. And I'm going to do a seam there. So I managed to get this skirt out of 110 centimeters. And that is extremely satisfying for me to get patterns out of less fabric than what they say. I mean, I saved like 50 centimeters of fabric. So that is awesome. Now I'm going to show you some details about the patch pockets. I did encounter some issues here and I'm going to show you what they are. Basically on the top that is angled, you have to fold in twice at 5 eighths of an inch. That's been interfaced and there's a raw area there that I have an issue with. Now on the tip there, on the top of this angle, there is an excess of seam allowance. It's a triangle shape and they do mention that. There, there is a guiding stitch that I've sewn at 3 eighths of an inch and I was perfectly able to press that pocket in. They recommend sewing it at 5 eighths of an inch and then clipping the curves so that you can press it properly. But I want to protect the fabric. 
I don't want to have raw things inside the pocket, so I decide to do it at 3 eighths of an inch instead of 5 eighths. That little corner there, I'm going to show you in a little bit how I'm going to deal with that to get a nice clean finish when I go up close and show you the sewing aspects. But first, let me tell you about the place that hasn't been trued on the side seam. Now, on the side of the pocket that attaches to the side seam, I had to surge that, and that is a bit redundant because that is going to be in the side seam. When you fold that in twice, there is that raw area that is not enclosed within the 5.8 side seam. So that was a bit annoying. <laughs> now, this excess triangle here, I am not going to fold that in and sew it onto the skirt like that. I think it's bulky and, you know not neat so i'm going to take that first fold and fold it back to the, towards the right side of the pocket pretty fiddly i'm fiddling that you know i'm getting the fold right so i've got right sides together there of the pocket with the fold and i'm going to pin that there and using the same seam allowance i used as the guiding stitch that three eighths of an inch i'm going to do a short little seam there that will close this up so I'm sewing there, very, very short, you know, seam and take that out and then you're going to see all this little bit of fabric in there that I'm going to trim the excess out of. So I'm trimming the excess there and then I'm going to turn this quite fiddly. Um, I use my scissors, I don't recommend that. I do it very carefully, <laughs> making sure I'm not going to like puncture through the pocket. And I fiddle with it a lot, you know, to get a really nice crisp, you know, corner there. Now, this is the top of the pocket, and I, I find this finish really neat and clean and, you know, nice for me. So I've got that other side done as well. I've got both sides done, and then I can go and hand baste onto the skirt and then attach the patch pockets. So what am I going to do? I want to make this skirt again. I want the side seams trued for a cleaner finish the way I would like a skirt to be. So this is the original pattern. The top there you fold twice and that gives you that unfinished area there. The line you see there is the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and that raw area there that I want to protect. So I've traced the pattern piece onto paper. I folded that and then cut it and then I get that little angled area there. So that little angled area means that when I fold it twice as instructed, everything is going to be super neat. So when I sew my pocket into the side seam, everything is going to be neatly enclosed in there. Okay, here I have view B, which is the wrap skirt. This um, particular skirt uses up a lot of fabric. I used two meters of fabric and I tried my best to get out of less. There was no way. And I chose this fabric that I purchased locally. It's a really appropriate fabric. It's a linen rayon blend. It's quite structured as you can see. It does drape but it's got the right amount of structure that they recommend. And so I'm going to open this so you can see. The wrap is fastened on the top with two buttons but when I open this it's big like this. So there is a center back seam and there is a seam at the waistband there in the center back. And then there's the side seams that have been pressed open there. So the two front skirt pieces are different. They are asymmetric, they're not the same. So you cut them in a single layer, like on their own. And they each have a facing. So this facing is also shaped. Um, the, the grain line mark on these facings is sort of angled to match the angle of the skirt. And I chose to finish the hem with self bias binding that I was able to squeeze out in an amount and make some. So I like bias binding for skirts that have this curve going around. I think it finishes very nicely and it's been hand hemmed. So on the outside it's invisible like that. On the left side of your body, there is this pocket on the inside. See this pocket piece? That part of that pocket is in there. And the other part is visible there. Similar to the Pietra pants that had that system, only it's just one pocket and it's angled. And inside this area here, it's interfaced on this angled area of the pocket. So to close it, you have two buttonholes, one on this part of the waistband and the other one is inside. And there's a button sewn in on the inside of the waistband and that's how it closes up. 
The wrap of the skirt is really good, like you're not going to be in any danger of showing leg or anything. It does wrap around nicely. I mentioned that part of this pocket piece here, this angled piece there is interfaced and there is a pattern piece for you to be able to cut the interfacing. Now one particular thing about this pattern, you, they instruct you to cut all the pieces right sides up on the fabric and that is because it's asymmetric, right? Same as the interfacing pieces for the facing, all the, the pieces that you need to interface on the instructions there on the pattern piece itself it says cut glue side up of the interfacing so I did all that with all the pieces but then found out there was an error in this interface part of the pocket uh, the pattern piece said glue side up like all the other rest of the pieces but it was actually meant to say glue side down so that's already been corrected in the digital pattern but if you've purchased the printed pattern you need to correct that and it's actually on the errata section of the website there that there is a mistake there. So I cut it like it said and then I had glue up on top of the wrong side of the pocket and I would have had to iron that on and it would have gone stuck on my iron, right? So I had to flip the pattern piece, cut it the other way so I could actually use it onto the pocket in the correct way. There are birds above me because this tree is the home of many birds. <laughs> if you see anything. So just keep that in mind if you've purchased the printed pattern you need to get that little interfacing uh, piece and just flip it and then you can like cut it properly you know. Here you can see the skirt on it's the correct length for me I think I could have like not lengthened it three inches maybe just two but it's fine like that. There you can see the wrap bit there where the button is and closes the skirt. I'm not going to flash you. <laughs> um, there is a pocket there on the side. It's just one pocket and I think visually it's really cool. Although because I chose a print you can't see it that much. There is the other button inside that holds the wrap closed. Um, yeah, I feel super good with this skirt. It's just the amount of volume that I can tolerate. Um, yeah, it's not a full, full skirt, but it's not a, a tight skirt. Okay, so I'm super happy with view B. This is view C and this is what you would have seen in the up close and so personal. So remember the view B had a seam on the center back of the waistband. This view didn't, it was meant to be cut all the way across and that would have made me waste fabric. So I thought, you know, there can always be a back center seam on a waistband. It's never wrong that there is one. And there is actually one on view B. So I thought, you know, might as well put one on view C and it's gonna save me fabric. So there is my center seam there on the waistband. And to get these two pattern pieces to fit on my width of fabric, I eliminated that center back seam for the skirt piece on the back. So, you know, no seam at the back. There is a seam on the waistband though. <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding you. This saved me like more than half a meter of fabric and I'd totally do that to save fabric, you know? And here is the waistband on the top. I chose these wooden buttons. I think they look really nice as a contrast with the colors of the skirt. Here are the patch pockets that maybe you can't see that much because of the print. But there is a double row of top stitching parallel there on the edge up there. And this is the angled bit that I did that uh, thing so that it would be nice and neat. You know, I, you saw that I did a seam and then flipped it right sides out. So there is that area there. There is the top that's angled and it's been sewn. And what I was talking about, the pockets not being true, that's what happens inside. So that white area is interfaced and this little bit there would have been totally raw. I had to surge that or the side seam of the pocket, which in the end is redundant because that is supposed to be enclosed here in the side seam, right? So in the side seam comes the pocket there. And so this area has been surged twice, the pocket, and then I surged it to the side seam of the skirt, which makes it a bit more bulky. But I mean, 
it would have been nice that the pocket would have been trued so that this area that you catch in there you know includes the foldy bit of the pocket there so I would have liked this to reach all the way into the side seam so that this would be an area that is going to be strong and that will survive wear and laundering you know like what you do with your clothes when you wear them you want those areas to be nice and sturdy and not have vulnerable like weaker areas that can fray and just like tear and side and everything and that is the same reason why I chose to fold in the patch pocket at just 3 8 so that I could press the curve really nicely without having to clip inside and have raw areas I don't have any raw areas inside the pocket it's all really clean there surged and safe you know so I basically had issues with the pockets for this skirt view B because the interfacing piece was labeled wrong and I ended up having to cut another piece of interfacing and I don't know about you but cutting interfacing is not a cool task <laughs> cutting fabric is fine but then you have to double up and cut pieces and pieces and pieces of interfacing you have to do it again not that fun and then I had to draft a proper pocket that I can use for following versions I'm going to make I actually adore this skirt the most because it takes up less fabric. I like the look, I like the pockets, I like how it fits and how it feels. Here you can see the skirt on, you can see the length is maybe an inch longer than I would like. I would have had to lengthen only two inches, not three from the knee length. Here up close you can see the big patch pocket. It's quite large. It's just an aesthetic thing for me. I'm not gonna place things in there as you know. But they have quite good depth and there you can see the waistband with the buttons going down. I really like the style of the skirt. The fit is good. I chose a, a size that would be nice and roomy at my waist so it would be more comfy. And I am super happy with this skirt. It's just a feel good sort of style of skirt that I want to make many more of, especially that I know I can make it in 1.1 meters. <laughs> Here are my two skirts. I love them both. I really like how they turned out, how I feel wearing them. View C is the one I'm going to be making more of. Um, not because I don't like View B. I love this one. I think it's really unique, the wrap and the asymmetric pocket and everything. But I think that two meters of fabric is just too much for what I like to spend on a skirt. I don't like to make skirts with so much fabric, you know, that's just my issue with fabric consumption. This one, on the other hand, gives me a similar look with only 1.1 meters of fabric, the way I managed to do the layout and have it turn out properly, you know, the same. So I think this is the one that I will make more versions of. I'm extremely happy with and yeah, I just love this fabric as well. <laughs> I have more linen prints that I've tucked away to make more of these because I really like this style of skirt. This one I might make again if I find some proper fabric on sale. I know that my opinion around the pockets of these skirts uh, might seem quite negative and I was actually quite nervous to actually state my opinion on here and tell you about them but they are real issues in construction that I did find with this pattern and to be honest I was quite disappointed. I had higher expectations and I do have a really high standard in how my items of clothing are finished on the inside. You know, you notice how detail oriented I am. And if there are pattern pieces that are angled and folded, of course, there's going to be funny truing out lines that I expected to find there that I didn't find. So that was that was a letdown for me in this pattern. Of course, I can fix it. You know, I have a new pocket piece I can use. But as someone that purchased a pattern, you know, you shouldn't be expected to be fixing things like that. You know, it should be fine. You should be able to make a garment that's going to 
last wear and washing and that is not going to be fraying on the inside and have vulnerable areas like that area in the pocket so that is my opinion let me know have you made these skirts are you planning to make them I love them I think view A is too simple for what I like to wear I think I will stick with view B if I find the appropriate fabric in two meters that is not going to be so expensive <laughs> but view C I'm going to make loads I love the style I love the style that is what I wanted to share today thank you so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share if you enjoy the content I'm whipping out all the time <laughs> thank you so much bye